Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hope you are well. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video, kind of go over my sketchbook process. So, there really is no process with my sketchbook, but I do have like a certain way that I go about doing my no process. <laughs> that makes any sense um, but yeah I'll, I'll, I'd love for you to give me some feedback or advice and I'm basically just hoping to uh, talk through my process generally speaking I was mostly hoping to just draw and talk and uh, to share some of the stuff that I do when I draw and also kind of just put it out there for the world to give me some feedback if you see anything at all that I could be doing better or like being more efficient with. So, uh, no, yeah, this should be fun. I got some, okay, I got some like random pencils here. Uh, this is just like, I don't know, something from a dollar store, like a felt pen. Uh, this is just like a pen pen, you know? Um, this is like a bigger, thicker pen and here's a black felt pen oh look at that. I don't even know what these things are so I'm finding out too that's uh, nearly dead oh it's coming back oh it's coming back and a pencil and a black pencil crayon but anyway, I don't, I don't think anyone really cares. Let me just get to it. Okay. Well, let me show you basically what's going on in my head when I draw. Generally speaking, um, I like drawing people. Uh, you might have noticed. So I'll always work off of like a person, like mannequin. And this is what's um, basically what I'm using in my head. It, this to me is how I've decided to break down the human body into... Uh, into its building blocks okay and you know I honestly I don't think I should be using this exact same mannequin most of the time but usually it is what I end up doing so this is kind of the little mental action figure that I'm posing uh, in my mind here and I do use um, an anatomy system like when I was learning anatomy um, you know, to memorize all like the canon proportions and stuff. I did Loomis, but then um, actually someone showed me the Robert Lee Robert Beverly Hale method, which which um, which involves less steps to measure. Actually, you know, instead of like counting someone's instead of counting someone's height to be eight heads tall or seven and a half heads tall, this one you just needed to count kind of like body part units instead of a specific head unit. It was the unit was uh, top of the head to the uh, pit of the neck and that's one and the next step down is the pit of the torso and the next step down is the crotch and the next step down from there was uh, was the top of the kneecap right here and then the next step down from there was uh, what I call the, this is a bit weird but what I call like the top of the sock line you know when you wear those like <laughs> those uh, ankle socks those old school ankle socks those dad socks um, that's about where that would end and then that's basically good enough for you to fill in the rest with so I'll do that for this side What should he be doing with his arms just hanging out here? The arms, the arms aren't so bad to um, remember because the arms, um, uh, well, there's less joints involved, right? There's the shoulder and then the elbow line is basically in line with the belly button here. 
right? And then the wrist is basically in line with the bottom of your crotch or like the crease of your bum. And um, if your hands were open, they would basically stop at about, see my, I think I drew mine a bit too long here. If your hands were open with your fingers, they would stop to about halfway down your upper thigh right there and obviously that varies you know obviously if you're fucking kevin durant your, your wingspan is going to be probably longer than that your proportions are going to be very different if you're an nba player but this is basically the dude that i got going inside my head and uh and so when i um, and I've basically drawn this a lot of times or enough times so that I can I can mostly I can mostly like uh, Draw something here. Let me see. I can just uh, Go in with the final lines and it will be somewhat close Let's See if I can make up a person here Maybe it's like a, I don't know what I'm going for. Maybe it's like a, a kid and he's like, he's like trying to summon something. I don't know when along the way in my <laughs> in my art I stopped making sound effects for what I was drawing, but that was definitely the day that um, that childhood ended for me. You know, um, I'm joking. I'm joking when I'm get that. I don't mean to get actually that dark, but I, I, I think there's something about just like growing up and then drawing and not feeling as a as immersed in drawing that that is a uh, just kind of like to me is a really unfortunate side effect of uh, of like I don't know growing up being an adult and thinking you have to be like this or this especially for artists I think it's very very sad because they need to I think there are very weird qualities of many um, like you know personality qualities of a lot of artists that kind of get get shoot out in like a public school setting, you know, when there are kids growing up, like you wouldn't necessarily want to do th that or say those things or or have too much energy or not enough energy for anything that's not art. You have to be a good science student, you must be a good mathematician and a dancer, and if you're not good at all of these random things <laughs> then you're probably a bad student if you cannot find a way to, as a kid asking a fucking kid if you cannot find a way to enjoy math the same way that you enjoy science and gym and music and health class and social studies and English if you can't and, and art like if you can't do that then there's something wrong with you you're not a good person, you're not a good kid. Like, that's crazy to me. But then the weird thing is that that stays with you, right? And when a kid genuinely believes that they're not good or not worthy of something, they just they just don't try, you know what I mean? And on the other hand, they will if they uh, if they believe it. And I think I think all of us are the same with art. Like we're all kids. That's why I'm talking about this. I I've mostly I don't know. Just when I was in school, I was teaching swimming a lot. So I've mostly worked with kids for like ten years because that's how long I've been fucking in school. Um, but I, I do feel like with art, sometimes we we're like kids, you know, if you, let's say you ask, like, a, ask a doctor to draw something cool, right, his, 
idea of something cool to someone who's trained in art. It's kind of cringy. Might be like a skull with a knife through its head or something. Like, like a lot of the old school tattoo designs are a great example. And um, and to us, um, all that says is that art is this kind of separate intelligence, just like anything, right? Just like you wouldn't give medical advice to a doctor if you're not a doctor. Um, to him, you sound like a kid. You sound like a stupid, ignorant child. In, in the same way, like, we all have different uh, varying intelligences for all the things we do. And for art, there's this, especially for art, it, it's hard to do that without preserving that, like, kid side of you, but in also preserving that kid side of you, 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 um, you're also preserving its weaknesses, too. And sometimes, sometimes the way that as an adult we can discern if, if we suck at something and, and uh, that that's okay because we're approaching with the right mindset or whatever, we understand that not all of our emotional stakes are being placed in a, how, how, good of a, how good of a cook you are or how good of a... Uh, how good of an artist you are, or how, how good of a whatever. Um, I think we... I think we really, um... God, where was I going with that? It is very difficult to try and draw and talk, by the way. Basically, in the same way that, uh, just like a kid, uh, you know, art helps us cultivate, like, wonder, right? And communicate wonder again, if that's what your goal is. Um, all those other, all those other, um, the, 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 the skills don't transfer the, the idea that in the real world we know what a bad investment is, or we know we can recognize what a, what a, uh, what an immature train of thought is. Uh, it's, it's harder to do so. With art, it's harder to make the complicated adult assessment and decision making and awareness um, properties. We, we don't have all those things uh, to the same effect in art. Uh, or if we do, it is a much slower sense. And for some people, I think it's a it's, it's a hidden sense. It's a hidden sensibility that you don't even realize. Uh, was something that was holding you back for so long. So, so it's really to, really easy to fall into these traps and to, uh, and to kind of be, be a follower and not a free thinker again. Um, and it's because, and I think it goes back to awareness. I think it's because you let your guard down. Uh, if you've decided to do art, you're like, oh, great. I made it. I, I, I made it through all the, the the no's and the naysayers in society and I've decided to do art that's good. So that's it. I've had my guard up for that and I needed to have a mental fortitude to deal with that. And now that I'm past that, that's all that that's that's all there was, right? But um, I think even in art there are such nuanced properties of those things because those things are simply like universal they're just everywhere at any place there's going to be the there's there will always be a cool kids club right there will always be a court of public opinion no matter where you are um there will always be um people who like want you to draw in like a certain way and uh, that's not gonna that's it doesn't help to it, it doesn't help to have too many of your eggs in, in that basket I think uh, to take their t I don't take them basically I'm saying take their words with a grain of salt or whatever right take my words with a grain of salt or whatever I don't know, something like that. So that's what's going on inside my head. And <clears throat> if 
if I were to do this digitally, I would start with something like this, especially to, to nail down the pose, and this is, <clears throat> this isn't a great pose by any means, but then I would, uh, I do, I do think layers are really powerful in that, uh, it lets you, it lets you, um, make better decisions. It gives you an opportunity to make these better decisions. I like the ridiculous hairstyles. I think it's fun. Uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna draw here. I have like no idea what this guy is supposed to be. But it'll start with like a cool guy hairstyle. Let's see where it goes. And this is like a weird head angle in perspective <clears throat> that I had a real tough time uh, trying to draw when I was younger. But basically, the how I got better at drawing heads in perspective was simply to just uh, just to memorize heads at certain stock angles. So this is just a head that I've drawn over and over a bunch of times looking that way and same would be if that head would just tilted uh, slightly one other way and really there's only about well, t to me I've broken it down to about just like nine useful heads and then nine useful head angles that you can slightly um, that you can slightly tweak to fill in the other so it's, uh, weirdly specific angles, right? Like you can always just diminish one side just a bit more and carry this side just a bit more um, more away if you were turning away, blah blah blah. This is ending up looking like some Final Fantasy thing. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can make someone in that like same universe as like this this chick over here. That'd be cool. Um, okay, so you know this needs more belts. So here's something that's really helped me out with uh, like foreshortening, like like in the arms here. Um, it really helps have something to just like wrap around the, the, the form to really sell it. So that's why I just kind of gave him gloves and uh, for this arm I'm like, hey, why not? He's gonna have a strap on his glove because that's an extra that's an extra two lines that I can use to help sell the form, right? So now he's gonna have a strap on his glove. Um, and, uh, you know, for his upper arm here, I can, let's see, I just kind of use the mark making in a way that kind of wraps around the form, but you can't, like, that already looks kind of weird, so you can't do that, like, too much, you gotta be, like, really picky about that. So now I'm gonna do that over here and pretend it's, like, a style thing that I do when, really, I just made a bad decision. He looks like he's got a bit of a paunch, but I'm not too worried about that. So maybe he does, who cares? Um, so in the same universe as this, I'm just gonna try and make them look a bit more unified. It's the pants, it's all in the pants, man. It's, it's all in the pants. Maybe the guy's gotta wear like a, I don't know, like a, oh man. I wanna put like an outside jock strap on him just to be weird, but. Yeah, why not? Alright, let's do it, just to be weird. Uh, let's see, how do I make it look tactical? Like it's a tactical, yeah, tactical jock strap, okay. There we go, now I don't even know what it is. Perfect. Perfect. Great decision. Great decision making.
I'm just, I'm gonna give this guy some more like heavy duty boots. Cause who knows what this, who knows what this guy's up to, you know. Another thing, another big thing that really helped me that I want to talk about is like, um, rhythms, and especially in this, I think this came from the Hogarth book, actually, which has a lot of tips in it, despite its weird, uh, just looking like a Michelin man, marbled, bald, buff guy drawings. He talks about the rhythms and how if, basically, if, if a leg is turned more sideways to you, like this leg, the rhythm of the leg goes in something more of an S, right? You can kind of see that here. This sweep and this sweep, the opposite way. Now, if the leg is mostly pointed towards you, like this leg coming out here, whereas this leg is more pointed like that, now if the leg is more pointed towards you, um, then the, the sweep of the leg, or the rhythm of the leg, is more like uh, a B, right? A B pointing, uh, a B pointing outwards of what that leg is, right? So for this one, what I should do is I should exaggerate this quad from over here, and I've got this little divot for where their knee is, and then I'll sweep out and then back in again. It's really subtle, but I think it'll make a big difference. Let's see how that works. So I'm, I'm mostly okay with that. Uh, and notice how this leg, when turned out, looks way more thick than this leg, because the leg itself is actually kind of like this shape especially the upper leg, the quad, and this leg would be like this. You know, pointing out to us like that. If that makes any sense. So it makes more sense that this leg is thicker. And he's, uh, what was I gonna do? He's gonna, he's gonna have cool guy boots too. I'm gonna design a wrap line into those boots, because I need something to sell it. Uh, let's see, it looks like I made these boots pretty standard looking. I gotta commit to it. Boring boots. Cool, so... There you go. I'm still not sure what this is. Maybe it's like a book messenger bag thing. I feel like he's just missing one more element. Hmm. And probably, if you're all out of ideas for your character designs, the absolute worst thing you could do is just put something behind it to break up the silhouette, okay? What does he have? A giant... This thing. What is this? Oh, you're about to find out. Let me tell you what this thing is. It's a giant this shaped thing. That's right, it's... It's a weird weapon. It's this shaped. Get a load of that. Uh, I think I kind of cut it in a bit too close to his knee there. The forms are too... They're, they're kind of just melting into each other, not like separate enough. Should have left a bigger gap to make it a bigger uh, cut to separate these two forms out. But yeah, so that's the felt pen. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I do, I do. I think I talked about this in a in a really old video of mine. But I do think that like s switching media for drawing is a good idea because. The tool, every tool comes with its own like limitations and and um, and advantages. But it's those things that kind of make you draw and think about drawing in a different way. For example, if I, uh, using the crayon, right? Um, 
I don't have a lot of a... Uh, I don't have... I feel like I'm not as precise with it. So I have to think in much more uh, general terms. And I mean, I don't... Even though these lines are pretty thin, I feel like I don't have as much control because the... It's very blunt, right? It's got like a very big tip and it's very... The, the way it is right now, it's got a big... Um, bald blunt tip so whenever I put it down it's kind of hard to tell where that lines gonna be because you know the head of this tip is kind of uneven uh, it's like an uncut gem so as I'm designing with it I'm really taking my time and then I feel like I, I feel like I am just instinctively drawing differently but if I can just like bring a bit more awareness to why I'm drawing differently then I can really capitalize on on uh, how how the pencil crayons kind of making me flex a separate art muscle a separate drawing muscle just to do this specific thing again I'm not sure what I'm drawing here yet it might be like a mecha thing. Also, I find that these 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 go these can go from very light to uh, very dark. Really, depending on and like you really gotta press if you want it like dark, but it will go dark. So I think that's kind of cool because you won't like accidentally really emphasize anything you don't want to because. You know, just by like trying to find the form, like I'll try and like I'm doing here, I'm kind of going back and forth, and these lines are kind of chicken scratchy because I'm trying to. And for this one too, see when I go back on my lines, I don't make a nice continuous lines. The little blots of ink will really show, so that really kind of discourages me from um, from making. Uh, I think just making a too hasty of, of a line when I don't need to be. There, that's how. <laughs> That's how I'll cover up my mistake. <laughs> See, I don't think I did as uh, good of a job as I could have drawing her because I couldn't, I, I didn't really have a plan for what she was doing. I guess she's shrugging with her hands in her pockets, but it doesn't <laughs> doesn't quite look like that. Let's see if I can just make something up now for this one. Uh, is really gonna like this. Hmm. I really need to like tell myself to get better at slowing down, especially when I'm trying to um, go over a form to trace over it or to add line weight to it. I think I rush through it too fast and like shit like that happens where I just miss the line completely. Another tip for more drawing to draw more precisely is just to go closer to the tip, right? You feel like you have way more control. 
but I have, I kind of, ever since I switched to just gripping the pen further out, I felt like, I felt like drawing became so much more loose and so much more fun for me, like it's, like that this, this kind of feels like a dance now, you know, whereas if I were to do that up close to the tip, I feel like I'm just measuring something again, like I'm, like I'm, have some invisible obligation to just like track the pen tip or whatever. You know, when reality, in reality, if I'm not, if I'm not trying to be clean, to be deliberately clean, then maybe I don't need to be right now. Uh, this is just, uh, this, this to me is more exploratory, and, uh, and I think it always helps every once in a while to do, like, to try and talk through your own process. I think it's very enlightening. I think it gets a lot of, um, gets a lot of my thoughts off my chest, and it also makes me confront these things that I believe in, to hear them out loud, and to try to, like, articulate them, to see if they even do make sense once I say it out loud. So many of your thoughts are just, you know, are, are just uh, blips of neurons firing, just electrical signals in our brain. And we have a feeling that we associate towards that thought. And so what that thought instead becomes is really just a feeling and not really any articulated idea or concept, right? I think that's a trap that's really easy to fall into, especially if uh, if you're trying to teach things or to try and be more mindful of the meta of something. Is to try and like externalize and verbalize your thoughts so they're not just a feeling inside of you. I want to I want to add one hand to this dude so it looks like he's doing something. I want to cheat and try to have his brachialis. That's the that's the, this muscle, and it kind of starts up here. I want to start like way 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 up there for this guy. Let's see if that looks a bit unnerving at all. What if it was just like a shell? His arm thing was just like kind of like a like a conch shell, and his hand was this thing that just like grew out of it. And it's kind of. up these these cool Naruto ninja hand signs but it's also kind of like an octopus thing so So I'm not sure if that was entirely effective. I think it might have even like hurt it a bit, especially because of this. Like this is this pattern, this sensibility for rendering form. It looks kind of like Mobius, and not quite what I was doing here with any of this other stuff. So it looks very out of place. Instead, I should have done something more like this. That might have made it look a bit more unified, but I'm just trying stuff out here and just seeing how it works. So I've changed my mind, I've decided to split this up into like, pieces of carapace. You have one going back here. I 
there, there's, there's a cosmic god of some sort. And I think it's important to like, so far I've been drawing from imagination, but I think it's important to, to, to do both. Because sometimes you'll learn stuff trying to, you'll, you'll, you'll learn stuff if you're in like the right mindset, you'll learn stuff off of anything you're doing, no matter what it is. So if I were to just um, find some reference, Like, sure, let's use this guy. He looks good to me. Um, there are all the great shapes here to, to inspire us. You can definitely... You can definitely... Um, learn something when you are uh, using the reference uh, as, as a loose guide. Uh, because then you're, you're having to make more critical decision making now, such as which, what of the reference do I want to kind of steal and, and inspire what I'm about to do. For me, I love this guy's like uh, expression and his head shape and his hair. I think it's something like like weirdly graphic that just like really works for whatever reason. So I'll draw a kind of like a this might be like a mystic kind of character here. And uh, I think I think this dude is gonna have a completely different personality to this guy. But you can see how the shapes, which was what I set out to be inspired by, these shapes will be more or less the same between these two pictures. This is the guy I'm using. So I'm changing up his cloak a bit, quite a bit. Let's see if I can do something about his expression. I want this guy to be like more crazy, kind of like a, almost like a crazy old wizard. What I had in mind for this guy was that he would be some sort of, like, aggressive librarian of some sort, but I don't know, I kind of just, I'm fine with how it's looking right now. I'm fine with this weird pattern I got going on here. Now I'm not really gonna like render this guy because it's the lighting in this image is pretty diffuse, so it, it'd be hard for me to kind of invent the lighting. That's still something I mostly struggle with. Like I can I can do the very basic like Rembrandt lighting, which is just which is just a person's face and they're lit from three quarter, basically, from here. This is basically Rembrandt light. <laughs> this is basically Rembrandt lighting. This particular lighting scheme with this particular uh, pattern of, of, of shadows on a person's face. So it's hard for me to, to nail exactly what kind of lighting this is because there I think there there's like two or three lights that they're using here. Um, so I'd have to like really get into the subtleties of it, which I don't think I can if I want to like communicate the the same type of lighting, which I'm not going to for that reason. Uh, another way, to, another good way to sell forms on a person's face is just to like literally draw those, like draw that shape in. It, it'll do the work for you. I, I kind of like to do it, and to me, it looks kind of stylized, but it also helps me read the face better to read the overall. Um, it's
see, I think I made his... See, I think if I wanted to, him to look a bit more intimidating, I should use more angular um, forms, more, more sharp forms, especially on the hands here. Basically get him to the point where he's got, like, claws, essentially. And because I'm lazy, I'll have a, I'll have a cowl, and just put some shadows behind him. Looks like his hands just emerging out of nothingness. Oh, uh, let's see. What else can I draw? What else should I kind of go over? Oh yeah, maybe um. Posing. Um, like, I'm really bad at perspective, right? So, when I'm trying to come up with a pose, it's it's really just me using those blocks again. Something like this. And I'll, I'll try my best to keep it dynamic. Like, I'll try not to have the squares all so rigid uh, with each other. Now tried. Like, let's see if I can have this looking pretty dynamic here. There we go. Here's some dude running with uh, running with a thing. Um, and it definitely looks like a girl because of the. I feel like I've the way I've um, kind of put their legs like this, I don't know how or why, I think it's because of anime we associate pe people with, who are kind of more pigeon-toed to be, to be girls. <laughs> Damn it, anime. Um, how about another pose, something like this. Uh, my boxes, by the way, could be completely off, as I said, like, my perspective isn't good. So I'm completely just intuiting these boxes right now. How would I do these boxes properly? Well, I'd need to draw, like, a horizon line, right? And then I'd find the station point, and then I'd find the... the and then I'd find the one of the vanishing points and then I trace it back to station point to make the 90 and trace that to the other one and that's how I'd be able to you know make a 90 degree corner off of those two vanishing points that's a that's a lot of work um, so, so like learning perspective is important but at one point or another you just gotta take it and capitalize on what what you love to do the best and only let it inform what you like to do. Uh, for me, I like drawing. I like drawing people. So when, when I learned just basic perspective, and I'm really rusty. Uh, when I learned just basic perspective, I applied it mostly to just figures, and I still don't have too much of a sense of of uh, landscapes or environments because I. I think most of the anime kids are mostly character artists. And, uh, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when I get there, or if, if, if at all, right? Because if you don't enjoy, if you don't enjoy doing something, uh, you're probably not gonna bother learning it properly, or if you are gonna spend time learning it it might not be as effective depending on like what point you are in your career definitely for me i think it does warrant me learning it but um if you already got something going with your art then and you've no interest in perspective right it, it might not <laughs> it might not uh merit so much of your attention maybe just a little bit so i'm very i, I really try to slow down when i'm at the feet because this is a great opportunity to show 
how how solid of a ground this person is standing on and, and also also the perspective we, we can we're really good at measuring heads in perspective like we really know that this head is this head is gonna be this dude like looking over there like that right because we are an expert of human heads because we, we look at them every day intuitively intuit intuitively we, we will know somehow if a head is uh, uh, in perspective and looking the right way for feet um, so we have something up here that's a guide right uh, it's a dead giveaway for for the perspective and we also it would be helpful to have something down here and uh, what most people have down here is their feet so really try and take their time I'm gonna really try and take my time making sure that we can feel this guy's shoes like going backwards or his foot going backwards in space and he's got a real solid foundation that he's standing on that's a part of this world the same world that this head exists in like like this last page over here I was just wanted to I do wanted to do something cool to show at the beginning of the video um, that's a good indicator of like how I drop I, I don't maybe it looks the same as all this other stuff I was doing here but it it definitely didn't feel the same because I think I was under a lot of pressure I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to be disingenuous and inauthentic and to show a better side of myself that I actually am so I really struggled with that and and it just derailed it like it just derailed my entire day because I was trying to be fake I was trying very hard to be fake um, uh, cuz I want to look good right but that's just not like th that that's just not me like the spirit of that is just not me I think I think this is what you're seeing right now is a much truer um, depiction of how I draw because I'm okay with it just like looking bad and I have to be okay with it looking bad uh, especially with the mechanical pencil I find it's really fun to try and search for forms because because um, it comes on very light and that's just how I think about design at least or specifically designing on the fly again with my uh, with my love for uh, Ava mech design big shoulder thing right I don't think there really is a consistent like design language to anything I draw because I just I haven't really committed to like any sort of world building project or any big idea thing I don't know why probably because I'm afraid um, so maybe I should try that um, but a lot of my you know when you look at some people's art you can really get a good sense of like what kind of shapes they're like what kind of what kind of designs this person is capable of doing but uh, uh, but for me I, I, mean, I definitely don't think I'm there yet or or the problem is I am just so all over the place with this is the best my design inspirations um, for the amount of diversity I have I do not have the appropriate amount of um, execution to like to refine and truly uh, to really like personalize and make my own the this 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 amalgamation of all these random uh, different inspirations right I'm not sure what's happening here why he's got a little crop top with the little frillies here but I'm a robo man <laughs> Uh, 
I always like, I, I really do think a lot of, I do, I would say a lot of my stuff, um, for characters, the, the design comes from just human anatomy, and I think most character people do that too, right? Like there's, it's like, the, it's it's with tattoo artists too, they, under, they need to have some understanding of anatomy to properly have forms flow across it, it's the same thing with character art, I think, um, having an idea of humanoid muscle structure uh, really helps with, you know, making other humanoid things. It helps to convince or to trick your audience into believing that this other thing could really be a humanoid thing. And they might not understand like anatomy at the same level as you do, but they understand it intuitively, right? As I said, because the, the biggest problem with, with being character artists is that people, everyone is a character expert. Um, and not so much, I feel like, with environment art, right? Uh, th though it does have its own set of completely separate, like, challenges. But for our challenge, specifically, if you're interested in drawing people and characters, is that people are experts at people, because we grew up in a people world, looking at people things, watching shows, reading books, and movies about people doing people things right and that uh you know 20 years of that will definitely um root itself deep in the human in the human psyche you know all right what else should i draw here tell me what, what else i should draw is if you could tell me what else i could draw here because this is definitely not live maybe next time This is just like a lady, a nice looking lady, who's also a robot. And you can see I'm doing the thing again where I'm just wrapping forms to, to really try and sell um, the foreshortening here. You see how kind of how <laughs> How, maybe how desperate I am to, to search for the forms. I'm, I'm literally drawing the cross contour lines over her chest uh, and around like the tube of her torso. Try and find something. You know, the other way to do this would be simply to use reference, right? But I don't want to do that because I have to get up. Some people, I think some people become really great observers in art, as in they become really good at observational drawing, and, um, you know, are really in tune with, like, color or lighting or something like that, and they will use a lot of references for figures because it, it just, to be that good at all those other things, they, oops, to be that good at all those other things they did, took them a lot of time, and that's time away from, from, learning to, say, draw the figure constructively, right? And, and I wonder, I wonder what the best, uh, I wonder what the best disbursement of that time is to, you know, for like maximum, to, for, for, for optimal art prowess. Uh, is it to trade some time away from figures to learn more about color? Or or uh, or photo real rendering, um, or light, uh, or perspective, uh, and to that I think most people would say, well, it depends on what kind of art you do. And if you're not sure what kind of art you do, or what kind of art you plan on like committing to, not that you should ever commit to any like one thing, right? Uh, you simply just have to keep drawing, 
to answer that question. Um, and as long as you're, as long as you're like enjoying yourself drawing and you're enjoying learning and you're okay with sucking, uh, you'll be on the right path. Cause there's just no way to know what, what you draw like or how you draw like, you know, like what is like, what, like, what is the criteria? Right? It, what's the 10 magic hidden checkboxes that you need to fulfill to understand that, oh, this is where I want to go. This is for sure the direction I want to take with my art. There's no way of knowing. Is it by feel? Well, that changes, right? Some, some things feel really good at the beginning, and then they don't. Like cookies, right? You eat 10 of them, it's, and then, 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 then they don't, right? Um, is, is it by is it by uh, is it by the number of likes right well, that doesn't work because if other people like a thing and you don't like it you're eventually just gonna burn out you're, you're not gonna do it uh, I know because I, I burnt out a lot um, well, what can you use then or what are the proper metrics and, and the hard answer is that I don't think there are any metrics to know exactly where your art is going to go I think I think the best course of action for us is is if you're still um, prioritizing your training. That is uh, the best course of action is to do what feels good. Um, of all the books on meta learning that I've read, the the biggest piece of information that I think is the most useful is is this idea that we must remember that ultimately across all the other factors uh, focus and attention are the two most important things for learning right are you focused and are you attentive are you there if you're not basically if you're not having fun it's you're not there and if you're not enjoying yourself you can force yourself to be there but can you force yourself like why do you why should you work why should you expend like your mental stamina to do this thing when you could just ride it like a wave and get so much more out of it right i think there are certain things like the vegetables um that we do need to force ourselves uh to learn and we need to really we need to really be picky and save our mental stamina for those things that we, we deem our vegetables, right? And other than that, if we are drawing the stuff we like, drawing in the way that we like, we're still learning from that experience. We're getting, because we are so hyper-focused and attentive during that experience, um, all of that stays with us. And the only key then is to do stuff you like with a hint of a gro growth mindset, you know, to with a hint of uh, being critical, with a hint of uh, uh, of being inspired while you're doing it, uh, with a bit of a uh, uh, a sense of reflection when you're done on it. Okay, just write three things. I'll do that right now. I'll write three things that I want to keep in mind better for next time. Uh, one of which is is to draw to draw fast and slow. I can spell. Um, is to distinguish between these two things. And sometimes you need to be fast. Sometimes you re you need to be slow. I want to be more conscious of when I need to be slow. Like if I was carving out a shape or an edge here, and when I can be fast like the way that I'd want this guy's hair to just feel very dynamic out of his head. Let's see if I can come up with three things. Um, I think three, three really is a magic number because it's realistic. It's, it's a number we're all familiar with. Um, just, it, just in the way that we've been children, we grew up and things came to us in threes, beginning, middle, end and all that. And uh, I, I think it's not uh, too difficult. It, it's difficult enough, but not too difficult, right? I used to force myself to come up with 10 things 
um, at the end of each drawing session or after a piece or whatever. 10 is really difficult, okay, but, and it eventually stopped because of that. Um, it felt like it was just too much. Uh, 3 is good. 3, I think, is realistic. Uh, so I need to draw fast and slow. Uh, I need, what else do I need to do? I'd like to improve my um, hands <laughs> and uh, perspective in, in figures. Hands expressions. I want to draw more expressive hands. Um, I, th I, I think it could be as easy as that. I don't think I came up with three good ones either. I, I think you can always come back to this list. You can always come back to it and uh, and reevaluate your uh, your study notes. Okay, I think it's crazy that for the longest time I thought that I, I didn't need study notes or I didn't need to reassess or reevaluate um, or to course correct my training or to, to to keep it more progressive or whatever like just I thought it's crazy to me that I thought just drawing for an hour was okay like that that was good enough hey if you made it this far into the video wow um, please leave your feedback, comments, and suggestions. And if this was interesting for you at all, please like, share, and subscribe so I'll know to make more.